here is my enemies to lovers realistic like in real for real for real life i would be on him like barbecue on ribs but i would pretend like i didn't want to be hello and welcome back to my channel i am sleepy bug sleepy girl sleep anyway <laughs> today we are going to be finishing up obscura chapter one <laughs> this is bittersweet this is bittersweet um this is one of the first games that i play for the channel um i'm excited we're gonna finish up um orleando's route and we're going to get the rest of his endings and then at the end we get to decide which ones were our favorite i'm excited you're excited let's do it okay so our first one that we're gonna try to get is the wine shop ending this is not a normal wine shop I shouldn't be surprised, given the instructions Orleander wrote for retrieving the wine include Be polite. They also include Don't spoil the surprise. Hello? The silence makes the hair on the back of my arm stand on end, but I refuse to be cowed by the empty room of all things. You're supposed to ring the bell at the door. I almost jump. <laughs> I turn to the left and see a shopkeeper wearing a heavily starched dress and a mask that clings tight to her face, emerging from a hidden door. Be polite. I didn't think to look there. Are you some kind of pheasant, just strutting into any door that pleases you? What? I'm sorry? Did you just come off the street, you stupid thing? I curl my toes tightly in my shoes. Polite. I was sent here by my employer. He didn't write about a bell in his note either. Employer? Oh no, you're one of absence vigil things, are you? I am. Sorry to disappoint you. Have we met before? I'd remember if that were the case. I see too many pheasants. I don't try and tell them apart anymore. I would be happy to get out of your way, except I don't think Orleander would be happy if I did that without picking up the wine he ordered first. Oh, is he Orleander now? It seems he still doesn't know how to pick names. I take it my employer hasn't always called himself Orleander. No, he rather fancies himself sly and keeps changing his name as if changing his name will hide who he is when he insists on always wearing that ridiculous coat. Pheasant, you may be, but at least you are the sensible sort that keeps your looks plain. Polite. Thank you. Wait here and I'll bring you your Orleander's wine. She's gone for a little while and when she returns she is carrying two bottles of wine. They are unlabeled and are, as far as I can tell, identical. Pick your poison. Oh no, it makes sense now. Uh, the one on the right? Good. The shopkeeper takes both bottles and disappears again. I've given up trying to understand what is happening here. 
She comes back with a labeled bottle and a wine glass with a dram of wine under the glass. Would you like to taste? Uh, yes. Whatever that means. Why not? I take the glass from the shopkeeper and swirl it, watching the legs trickle down. I pull my mask away from my face just enough to take in a deep breath and catch the wine smell. Then a little clumsily, I remove the bottom plate of my mask and take a sip of the wine. It's obviously a very high quality, but there's a taste to it that I cannot place. Something sharp and strange and unrecognizable. I finish off the glass, letting the wine sit on my tongue. Is it to your liking, stupid pheasant? There's something about the shopkeeper's words. It's very good, like nothing I've ever tasted before. What's in it? It's a fine but ordinary wine, but blended with the additional ingredients. That would be the flavor I've never had before. The shopkeeper talks for a few minutes about the process, an exotic seed pod that is mashed and boiled and strained and treated with all kinds of chemicals until it produces a very rare and very desirable elixir. An elixir that you now have in your veins. Something suddenly takes my lungs in its fist. It squeezes. My hands go to my chest and then my throat. There is no obstruction. There is nothing presenting, preventing air from reaching my lungs. But the air is rejecting my lungs. No matter how hard I fight, I cannot take in enough breath. I'm hit with dizziness from the lack of breath or... Another cause. I try to look up at the shopkeeper, but my vision is getting soft, and grayness is crawling in from my periphery. I raise my hand, and it shakes so violently that the wine glass falls from my grasp. Through deep water, I hear the shopkeeper swear. Idiot! That was my good glass! The gray completely overtakes my sight. I feel my whole body shaking violently. My muscles will ache in the morning from that. Just pass away quickly so I can put you away. I stop hearing anything else. My heart pounds hard in my chest once, then twice, then not again. That end. Don't spoil the surprise. Don't spoil the surprise. Mm. Mm. I saw that one coming. Okay, so this one, this time we're going to actually, um, start, we're going to flirt with Adonis this time, even though he gives me the creepies. He gives me the illy willies. He gives me the illy willies. Someone steps in front of me holding two wine glasses. What? Sorry, I, uh, couldn't help but notice you and I thought... This is the best way to break the ice. I'm Adonis. Vigil. It's a pleasure to meet you, Vigil. Now, about the drink. Um, I'll take it this time. Thank you. Hopefully you didn't put anything weird in it. I take the glass from him and take a sip. It's good. And what was that about catching your eye? I confess, it was seeing a peek of your outfit from under your cloak. That's a very clever way to make seeing your clothes feel a little more forbidden. Well, I dressed to impress specifically you, so I'm pleased it worked. If I'd known you were wearing a dress for me, I would have picked a more daring opening move. Next time. There's a promise in the words. Next time. Well, don't let me stop you from your turn around the room. But if a conversation partner would be amendable to you, I could be convinced. I start walking and Iodonis keeps my pace, staying close enough to me to make it clear that we're walking together without crowding me. If random strangers are going to approach me out of nowhere, I can only hope all of them have Iodonis' social graces. Well then, 
Where are you taking us? I found my greatest joy in the marketplace would be wandering around and seeing what happens. And so I intend to continue that. Just wandering? Surely a capable guide could give you a better time. Oh, I'm certain one could. My employer gave me directions to Satine, and that was a fascinating shop, or labyrinth. Oh, good old Satine, what an institution. I'm certain you found something fascinating. Oh yes, I rather like my new taxidermized bird. However, I only found my employer in the first place through wandering the marketplace. Well, consider this. You have wandered around my path now. Perhaps I'm like your employer. Someone who can provide another map to the marketplace. I'm considering it. What sort of wonders would you guide me to? Adonis begins talking quickly and with enthusiasm for the food of the underground. Every kind of person lives under the mountain, and they have brought every type of cuisine with them. And then there are business agreements and marriages, and suddenly there are combinations of flavors. I think it's fair to say that he likes his food. As we continue talking, he subtly begins taking the lead of our stroll. He brings us down a hallway and away from the main room, and then through one of the many doors. The light here is lower and the sound is muted. It, makes, it takes a moment, but I recognize the room as a library. The faint hissing of whispered voices confirms that we are not alone in here, even if I cannot see any other guests. Oh, this is nice. What is it nice for? Sneaking around, getting into mischief, everyone loves a good library. This is a good library, I will confess. A soft moan tells me exactly what kind of mischief is happening just out of sight. Do you want to take a seat? Taking stock of myself, I do feel a little tired. Let's. There's an alcove with a padded bench, perfect for a few lazy hours of reading. I sink down until I am on the bench sagging a little. The tiredness is coming harder now. Why? Are you alright? I feel a little woozy. Maybe that drink was stronger than I thought. Adana sets a hand on my shoulder and the other on my knee. Just take a deep breath. I'm not about to stop breathing. My head feels unbelievably heavy. Adonis' hands gently guide me to lie on the bench. There we go. My eyes are shut. I didn't realize I closed them. Oh crap. The realization hits me. Not now. Please. Please. I can't even open my eyes. My symptoms aren't supposed to be this severe yet. A hand. Adonis's hand. Smooths back my hood and runs it over my head. That was surprisingly easy. I guess the old bastard is getting slow, not teaching his assistants properly anymore. What? I can barely think. The moment of panic was the only thing keeping me awake, with the shock fading. Well, he'll get what's coming to him. Another stroke. Sorry, Vigil. Not your fault that your employer is a motherfucker. Quiet. Bad end. Put in too much trust. And this is why we don't trust weird men who take us to random lonely spots in the library unless it is 
consensual a thousand percent no slut shaming in this this christian minecraft discord we're gonna be bad noodles because i do have a terrible drinking tolerance we're gonna be a bad noodle and we're gonna get a drink we about to get sloshed i ask for a glass of whatever the staff would recommend and i get a tall flute of something bubbly and pink it's not as sweet as i expected but still bright and pleasant I'm walking through the hall, just observing the people, when someone taps me on the shoulder. I excuse me. I turn around and see a person in a brightly painted theater mask in a suit. Oh, this guy again. Sorry to bother you, I, I noticed you coming in with Mr. Oleander. I did, I'm his assistant, Vigil. Elmwood, pleased to meet you. They shake my hand firmly. Um, what can I do for you? I wanted to make a deal with Mr. Oleander, but uh, setting up a, a meeting has been difficult. He doesn't have a consistent office or anything like that, so, uh, you know, just have to know him or someone close to him first. And getting those connections can be really hard. Someone in this party he hasn't met? Is that for a reason? Well, what kind of deal are you looking to strike? Might as well fill him out before I make any promises. My business partner and I want to make a deal with Orleander. Um, you'll have to be more specific than that. He's an alchemist and or an apprentice, I guess. We want to strike out on our own, but we can't without supplies. There's plenty of alchemists here with supplies. Surely you have a network. There's a network, yeah, but um, only for the normal stuff. My partner wants to try new stuff, but that means getting other stuff. And none of the normal merchants sell other stuff. Not liking how they say normal merchants. Do you mean more controversial goods? Yeah, those. Human teeth, critter hearts, blood, the, the gross stuff. Mature. Since the normal merchants won't carry them, we need someone to supply us with that stuff. And maybe give us a deal? What kind of deal? Well, Orleander's kind of expensive, isn't he? Maybe he could uh, cut his rates for us and in return we give up access to the stuff we make? Why would access to your stuff suffice for a discount? It's, it's going to be good. At least they sound completely confident about that. Well, uh, let's arrange the meeting this time, even though it, I, the dialogue has changed and he's even more deranged in this one. It's better for Le Orleander to make that call than me. I can't guarantee that Orleander will make arrangements with you, but I can get you meeting with him. That's all we need. They hand me a business card. Here's my info. It's handwritten, legible, but slightly smudged. Thank you so much. Don't thank me until you've got a deal. So we ended up with Adonis again. We're going to let him touch us this time. That sounds weird. I don't say a word about the contact. That seems to embolden him. His hand slips under my cloak until his whole arm is around me. Tell you what, Vigil, why don't you show me that room of yours? Show me your new taxidermized bird. I'd like to get to know you better, after all. His proposition might have been subtle, but if not for the tone of his voice, he's letting every word rumble in his chest. He's bold. I'll give him that. Uh, I'm working right now. I'm a working girl. As interesting as that sounds, right now I'm working. This is working. So says my employer. What a curious person they must be. Curious is one word for him. I suppose I have to put off seeing your taxidermized bird for another day. Until then, however, he stands up and then takes a card from inside his jacket and hands it to me. In case you decide to keep in touch. Big Daddy, I missed you. Vigil, welcome back. Good to see you haven't gotten into any trouble. Now, don't pretend to be my minder now. I'd be much more concerned about you causing trouble. I've been having
having some adventures. Oh, enlighten me then. Someone who called themselves Elmwood approached me. He'd seen us together and decided that the best way to get a meeting with you was through me. That name sounds extraordinarily fake. You're one to talk, Mr. Absinthe. He seemed earnest enough, so I told him I'd arrange something with you. I have his business card. Well, I didn't expect you to start vetting clients for me this soon, but I suppose I can't complain. Speaking of which, the card I received from Adonis, from Adonis sits, Adonis, the card I received from Adonis sits heavily in my pocket. Uh, we're gonna be bad. We're gonna keep it secret. I doubt Adonis would want me to bring Orleander into things. He didn't approach me for his business reasons after all. Actually, never mind. You tease. I love him. Now, are you going to ask me what I've been up to? But, how about a drink first? Yay, more booze. That sounds nice. It does. Doesn't it? He waves over a member of the staff who is carrying a tray. He takes two glasses and hands one to me. Cheers. We clink our glasses together and I enjoy a sip. Then, to my surprise, Orleander takes a silent step back. Um, we're just about to get sloshed. But you'll think on it, won't you? Uh, sure. I take the wine glass. You've been so polite, I could hardly reject you now. I'll consider your offer. I would be an idiot not to take this chance. I doubt a patron can open more doors for me than Orleander can, but if I have even one chance to find Lunar Record without him, I need to take it. I'm not about to be desperate about it. My new patron leaves and Orleander fills the gap as if he was never gone. Have I lost you to a better offer then? I received a very tempting offer to become a pleasure parlor bunny. I know that's not a good thing, but I really like the title pleasure parlor bunny. How are you at dancing? Um, I try my best, which I think is all anyone can really ask of a person. Adorable. He taps my mask over my nose. Let's try our best, then. He offers me his arm. I like the sound of that. <laughs> so, Vigil, what do you think of this? I never imagined myself at a party like this before. It's impressive. I understand why so many stories are set during these kinds of fancy parties now. There is something unreal to this kind of festivity, isn't there? Music, indulgence, sex, and beautiful, mysterious strangers. I'd like to read that book. And from the sound of it, you've made good progress as my assistant. It's a start. And what do you think? Is this life something you'd like? Ah! It's what I need to do. I think a merchant like you understands that sometimes a transaction is out of necessity. Well, that's a little bit of a shame. I rather like working with you. And I hope you would like working with me too. I don't hate it. It just isn't what I want for the rest of my life. That's a fair perspective. We turn on the dance floor. I suspect Orleander would dance beautifully with a competent partner, but he seems content to float along doing the easiest steps because I'm probably shoisted. For a man as restless in his flirtations as he is, Orleander is surprisingly gentle. His hands never hold tighter than they must to lead, and the one on my waist never dips lower. I haven't stepped on your foot yet. I'm impressed. You're better at this than you suggested. I could still step on your foot later. I trust that you'll stay careful. When the music ends, we retreat to the edge of the dance floor. <gasps> no sexual tension. Vigil. 
Let's talk. Okay. Is daddy mad at her? I believe I asked you to drink within your tolerances, did I not? You did. And have you? I have. He tuts. You were sloppy while dancing. Even for someone who is only able to try their best. I, I feel fine. You feel fine because you are affected. As much as I want everyone to have a good time. The simple fact is that I gave you a clear order and you went against it. I didn't. That will be all for tonight, Vigil. Go home. Meet me at my parlor tomorrow. We'll discuss your termination then. Daddy, no! Oh. He meant it. I'm left standing bewildered in the hall as Orleander walks away. Daddy! That end. You overindulged. I don't like that ending. I don't want it. Put it back. Put it back. I don't want it. Okay, so last time we spoke. So let, this time, let's just keep quiet. I bite my tongue. Orleander's got plenty of charm. And I know I'd enjoy chatting with him. But he's dominating the space right now. And for all I know, he might not like sharing the limelight. You know what? That's a fair... That is a fair assumption. That was a fair assumption. This is a fair assumption. Orleander leads us on a thrilling riddle he's just heard to compensate for the lack of amusement. Then, there's a conversation about a unique business feeling going through. Once I catch Orleander looking at me, but only once in the conversation that must easily span an hour or more in a half dozen topics. Finally, he seems to tire of the attention. Well, I think I deserve a little wine for being such a good host. He steps back away from the crowd. I can bring you some. No need, no need. I ought to stretch my legs and see the others, too. He walks away, going around the group and passing behind me. Then I feel a hand on my shoulder, then an arm on the top of my back, then a chin on my shoulder. Don't think I didn't see you withdrawing your name, Minx. You want my attention that badly? Ask the nice lady with the sword of vindication. Then he's gone before I answer. That would have had me shaking in my boots. I would have been shaking in my boots. I'm shaking in my boots. Okay. That was strange. The crowd lingers, but some of the people disperse. Well, I've answered my question. Orleander's quite the entertaining person. I take his hand and shake it once, firmly. Then I tuck my hand back under my cloak. No need to give him more body language to read. A pleasure to meet you. Most people attempt to get my attention through flash and noise. Anyone willing to be mysterious is worth a little... investigating. You caught my eye from across the room. A little flattery can't hurt. I am probably your best hope for finding Lunar Core here. And it just so happens that I am currently looking for a new assistant. Then hire me. Then hire me. It's out of my mouth before I can stop myself. Then you're hired. That's big. Uh -uh. That's big eggplant energy right there. Big eggplant energy. It's a kitty clincher. He's the, uh, Orleander's a kitty clincher, and I just, I can't, I can't with that information. Then you're hired. It's that easy. Oh, there's one more thing. Here's the catch. All my assistants go by visual on the job. You'll have to agree to that. Oh, is that all? I know it's just one more name to put on the pile. 
You're clearly someone who uses a fake name with everyone. But I hope you can endure it. I think I can tolerate it for now. Before I can pull my hand away, however, he grips it a bit more firmly. I look forward to seeing how much fun we can have together. Then he lets go of my hand. There's a second of silence, but Oleander is quick to fill it with time and a place to meet up to Carl, as well as more mundane details about the work. If he's being honest about everything, the pay will even be decent. I have learned a great deal about Oleander's business. Above ground, I would call him a merchant. He sells goods from the underground and purchases goods from above ground. He connects buyers and sellers. It's the kind of goods he's trading that mark him as unusual. No life humans, thankfully, but I saw a box of teeth that looked nauseatingly familiar among the goods he was sending out. Then, there were magical goods and the allegedly magical goods. I guess this means you've been ensnared by my good looks and winning personality. There's no way I've learned all your secrets yet. Oh, is that all you want me for? Well, you're a little charming. You're a little charming. Fine, you got me. You're a font of charisma, the likes of which I've never seen before. Truly the most incredible man I've ever met. Is that compliment enough for you, sir? Orleander preens like a darn bird. I'm always ready for more if you have it, Sleepy. I think I fed your ego enough. Mm-hmm, that's it, Owl. My ego is fat and happy as a spoiled dog thanks to you. What an image. Now, we have work to do. Orleander is the one catching eyes. My job as an assistant is to be the background, hopefully invisible. And if no one looks at me, that means they won't notice I'm watching them. Thanks for your help. I don't think I could have braved the dress cave alone. Okay, so we're gonna just show him our outfit. We're not gonna be showy. I open my cloak, giving Orleander a good look at my outfit. He gives me an improving nod. Wearing black under your cloak? You're going to blend into the shadows. If I'm hiding in the shadows, I'll be able to watch without being observed. And you'll be able to listen in to plenty of conversations. At any rate, you've chosen something stunning. You'll have to chase off work offers with a stick. I wasn't planning on taking a different job, you weirdo. Your rate is good. Good. Stick with that. This is my newest vigil. I'd rather like her. She's quick. I bow my head to the other guests. They seem like the kind of people who want that. Pleased to meet you. I thought that was your shadow. Well, in a matter of speaking. I'm easy to miss when he's drawing everyone's attention. I'm rather fond of this vigil. New though she may be, the last vigil was skilled, but not much of a social bee. Oh, we got a whole different... Okay. I stop my tour around the hall in a dark corner. There's a lot of dark corners in this place, of course, but this one is unoccupied. I can see a crowd of people where I believe Orleander was before. So presumably, he's still there and assuming the group. There are a few well-dressed people getting significantly more attention from the staff than the other guests. These might be Lord Valentine or other so-called nobles of the marketplace. Mostly, my vision is occupied by the bright colors most of the guests are wearing. This hall might even put the dress cave to shame. Oh no. Seriously? This is... I hear someone to the left behind me, which is a little strange given my back is to a wall. I turn and cannot see anyone, of course. This is good, but the voices are still there. Curious, I lean just slightly towards the source and focus. If word about this is right, that mother load of silver dust is real. Then we gotta move fast. Oh crap. Silver dust is a drug. But not the domesticated sort like sweet grass or alcohol. Its trade in the underground is tied to dangerous folks. The only deal Orleander hadn't let me see in person involved silver dust changing hands. Aww. I... 
I love protective Orleander. Uh, anyway, it, it does something to me. What does that say about me? But it's fine. There is every chance that this is information that will be dangerous for me to hear. Listen. <laughs> yeah. I breathe in and stay put, putting my ear toward the wall. My source is on the boat. They say it's coming in two weeks. I keep listening. The strangers argue about the reliability of the source. They bicker about what they can do with the potential inside information. Then, very suddenly, a large painting swings off the wall and towards me and I jump away. The painting swings closed and I see a woman in a billowing cloak with peaks of clothes fitting feathery gown underneath. Okay, there's a secret room behind the painting. After a second, she seems to notice me. There's so many, there's so many. Oh my god, I didn't even know this was here. Let's stay. I stay put, even nodding to acknowledge her. I'd say the painting coming off the wall scared the daylights out of me if I had any daylight left to spare. I didn't mean to startle you. I assumed you didn't. That wouldn't be a very kind thing to do. What the heck am I saying? My mouth is running on its own. Lord Valentine likes his little hideaways. In a house as big as this, he's probably got a dozen of them. I'll have to be careful opening any doors or paintings. Who knows what I'll see. Do be careful, there are. So many people engaging in flagrante delicato. And Lord Valentine doesn't mind. I wouldn't dare assume either way. She's maintaining a conversation, but it's obvious in her body language that she doesn't want to be here. That does feel like a dangerous thing to ask a lord. Do you mind all the intercourse going on at your party? Feels like sort of a thing you say to get kicked out. Yes. Goodbye. Farewell. Pleasure talking with you. We're such a little crap. <laughs> I hold my breath and she leaves and then sigh. One point to me for making someone dangerous so uncomfortable they leave. <laughs> I can let Orleander know what I've heard once we're in private. I decide to continue my trip around the hall before anyone else emerges from a painting. Vigil, welcome back. Call me baby girl, that's all, that's all you gotta do. Good to see you haven't gotten into trouble. No, don't pretend to be my minder now. I'd be much more concerned about you causing trouble. I've been having some adventures. Oh, enlighten me then. I think this is the kind of news you'd rather hear in private. Isn't that salacious? What have you been up to, assistant of mine? You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> you think you're teasing me by saying that? But I quite enjoy the thrill of delayed gratification. I genuinely cannot tell if he thinks I have gossip for him if I, or if he's simply playing it off to avoid suspicion. How about a drink first? Yeah! That sounds nice. It does, doesn't it? We clink our glasses together and I enjoy a sip. Then, to my surprise, Orleander takes a step back. Before I can respond, someone replaced him. A woman, I think, wearing a smooth mask of polished ebony. Hello. You are Vigil? The simple statement of fact catches me off guard. I've gotten used to talking with Orleander, who always leaves some kind of hook in his words. I am. Good. Pleased to meet you. I'd say the same, but I don't know who you are. Call me Snake. I will then. Please to meet you, Snake. You don't play games constantly the way Orleander does. I like that. Thank you. Is that why you wanted to meet me? As a less annoying way to access him? No, actually. I'm here for you. Should I ask why you want me? Orleander has a habit of training his assistants to go on to make careers of their own. Some of them have been quite successful. So I would like to get an early start working with you. As a sponsor for my merchant career? As a patron, let's say. I find some opportunities. You pay me back with favors. I like Orleander. 
but he is exhausting. If I can build new connections with someone as less frivolous, well, I suppose not everyone will be charmed by him. I understand. Is this something you need me to decide now? I'd like to have some time to think things over if possible. That's reasonable. She picks up two wine glasses from a passing tray and holds it out to me. As long as you'll think about it. Um, I'm up. I wave my hand just enough to signal my rejection of the wine. No wine for me, thank you, but I will think about your offer. I would be an idiot not to take this chance. I doubt a patron can open more doors for me than Orleander can, but if I have even one more chance to find Lunar Ikor without him, I need to take it. But I'm not about to be desperate about it. How are you at dancing? Um, uh, ah! I try my best. When the music ends, we retreat to the edge of the dance floor. Vigil, let's talk. How worried should I be? Not worried at all. You are not about to be admonished. That's a relief. I'd hate to see what you look like when you're being serious. Oh, that'll come soon enough. He pats my shoulder. I just wanted to tell you that tonight has been a pleasure. You're a bright little thing, you know. I do know. So glad you can see from behind that mask of yours. I try to put on some imitation of his ego and he chuckles. I hope you're not becoming too much like me now. Given how much you adore yourself, I thought you'd like that sort of thing. He shrugs. One of me is more than enough, I think. I wouldn't want to inflict being me on anyone else. Huh. I don't think he meant that to sound so heartfelt just then. Those lazy fools need to develop their own sparkling personalities. And he's back now. Well, I think I have been earnest enough to last me a year. Back to business. Come along, Vigil. This will be a memorable one. Oh, pardon me. I forgot to introduce myself properly. I am Orleander, and as you know, I pride myself as a merchant, capable of both discretion and trustworthiness. He bows. And this is my assistant, Vigil, who I'm terribly in love with. She's very cute. I bow. A pleasure to meet you, Lord Valentine. An excellent shadow you have yourself, Mr. Orleander. I hardly noticed them. And what do I owe your interest? Orleander slides gracefully into a chair across from Lord Valentine. I, st I stay standing, covering over his shoulder. I really am his shadow. Orleander pours a glass for himself and Lord Valentine. He really needs to stop speaking on my behalf. Orleander and Lord Valentine clink their glasses together and drink. Orleander moans satisfied. Hmm? The wine you made me pick up. It was poison, but you, you drank it. I have a lot of time to prepare for this moment, including developing a strong stomach and a high tolerance for darker things. If I look up, I will have to see his mask, and I don't want to. But I don't want him to think I'm vulnerable in case he tries something with me. And there he is. Unreadable. I know you're frightened right now, but you're right to be. He stands at his full height. I just saw him kill a man. I don't doubt he would kill me if he wanted. For now, you're safe with me. If you want to stay like that, you need to follow my lead. Lord Valentine suddenly died. He and I both drank the wine that came from his cellar. That is the only truth anyone needs to know. You included. I am trembling so violently that I might collapse. I'm in hell. I'm going to alert the guards by screaming. That's your warning. His posture changes. Orleander scrambles to the door, looking suddenly uncoordinated. Help! For the love of the lunar god, we need help! Lord Valentine just died! Help! 
neutral ending. Do your job and it will be okay. Oh, dude, that's crazy. Let's go around and finagle a little bit because I want to see some. Um, first of all, let's go and see the look, guys. We got all the endings for all the routes. Yay! Good job. We got all the CGs with everybody. Let's let's go down memory lane. Big Daddy Kier. Okay, so here we go. Oh, so Kier is definitely um, Kier is my enemies to lovers. He's my enemies to lovers, and he's probably like realistically the one that I would go for. Realistic, like in real for real for real life, I would I would I would be on him like barbecue on ribs but i would pretend like i didn't want to be no serious <laughs> here hear me out hear me out i know he's crazy i know he's sadistic i am a serious apologist because look at him look at him how could i not be he was my first he was the first, guys. He was our first one. I have to. I have to. He's so beautiful for no reason. Oh, my God. His scenes were intense, though. He was intense. He was the one that I was about to be like, peaches. Peaches. Mm. Um, but I... I really like Sirius. He's, he gives yes sir vibes. Yes sir vibes beautiful i love it and then we have our baby francesco francesco is my son and when i say we named him puppy for a reason we named him puppy for a reason he would he would he more so would be the one that i would want to be best friends with i want we i would do the crazy stuff with him i would do the crazy stuff i'm like He'll be like, do you, do you want to go and do some angel dust? And I'll be like, all right, just once though, because I ain't trying to get addicted. I wouldn't actually do it, guys. I promise don't do drugs, kids. It's not good for you. And then we have Oleander. This man is dangerous. He is He's the type that I couldn't, I couldn't even talk to. Like I would just, I, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Okay, so if we're ranking, Kier will be number one. Don't judge me, y'all know how I am with redheads. <sighs> I, We're ranking dating worthy. Dating worthy. Kira is number one. He's definitely first, first come, first served. I love him. Number two, I think it might be Orleander. He has the charm that I like. And I, uh, Sirius would be three. Him and Orleander are like, like they, they're like this close. They're like this close. They're neck and neck. And then, oh, don't do that. And then Chesco, that's my baby. He's more so my baby. This is my son, so I can't date him. Anywho. Oh, there's an extra story. Okay. You emerge from your room into the main dining space of the end. The leaping bear is almost cozy, at least by the standards of the underground. The fire crackles away, bathing the entire locale in a rich golden glow. One side of the room is a party of five or six people, and their body language is extremely unnerving. They're almost silent, but they give off the strong impression of a group about to break into a violent argument. On the far end of the room, there is one cloaked individual. They have the right idea. Breakfast in hand, 
you approach. Can I sit with you? Oh, I didn't notice you. Go ahead. I wouldn't want to sit too close to that group either. They don't look like the cheerful sort of party. There's a genuine energy in their voice that catches your ear. Whoever this person is, they earnestly don't mind sharing the table with you. Though, I have a feeling that Rufus would stop them before they could get, cause too many problems. You're probably right. I have a bad feeling. Rufus? Nah, we love Rufus in this house. <laughs> Rufus is... We know who Rufus is. You, you're probably right. I know I wouldn't do anything to get on his bad side. I doubt anyone wants to give him a reason to use that bad of his. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Vesper. It's us! What should I call you? Oh my god, I love it. Sleepy. Call me Sleepy. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Sleepy. If that is your name. Can we have a Vesper route? I want to date Vesper. <laughs> I want to date them. <laughs> They're really fun. <laughs> there is a warm and good humor in their voice. Something you haven't heard from other strangers here. Forgive me for saying but I assume it's a false name you're giving me. It is. But I suppose there's something liberating about being someone else. Not that I would know that. I've been nothing but honest with you. Of course. All right now, you nod along. But what are you here for? Buying, selling. Um, uh, I'm just visiting. I've heard people come here to see the marketplace. Can't say I fully understand it myself. I only come here because there's something I need to buy. Turns out buying rare substances is quite difficult, even in a market that sells everything. A market that deals with rare goods just has all sorts of rarities, not an abundance of them. What are you buying? Nothing at the moment. I'm rather picky about the rare goods I buy these days. Not just any rare goods can satisfy my taste. I'm fortunate to have found someone knowledgeable to help. A lunar priest, actually. He's... Well, he's got a particular taste for things I've never considered before. <laughs> but he's giving me a lead, and I need that. That's interesting. So, like, canonically, is, like, serious who we end up with? We need to end up with Orleander, because I feel like Orleander would for real, for real be the best route. Anyway. Across the room, sound rings out. Fists slam on the table, and dirty cutlery tumbles unceremoniously to the floor. Vester makes a point in ignoring them completely. They lean in slightly. So sleepy? Do you like it down here? Why am I being... Why am I being, like, romanced by Vesper right now? I love it. Like, let, the, let this be a thing. I do like it. Not really. I haven't been here long enough to know. I like it. Really? I suppose it takes all sorts of people to make a world. And... Sometimes things here are quite beautiful. Uh, stop. Is it, I wonder if I, I'm so like nervous with, or not nervous, but like easily romanced with Vesper because Vesper is, um, what is it? Like we, we know Vesper. But <laughs> okay. You're here after all. I've seen beautiful things. You're here after all. You gonna flirt? I'm gonna flirt back. Because it's a computer screen. Flatterer. They don't sound mad, though. Your comment seems to have made them happy. They're probably about to say something. They do seem to be the chatty sort. But the tense group across the room chooses the moment to erupt into a fight. Oh, crap. Do we run? Rufus will handle it. But I'd like to stay out of his way until he's done. It may get messy. They get up. You abandon your half-eaten breakfast on the table to follow them. He's got a rather dangerous-looking bat, and I'd rather not see him use it. Despite the topic at hand, there's a lightness in their voice. They clearly want to avoid the fight, but it's not remotely worrying them. 
At the door, they stop. I should probably get moving. But it has been a pleasure speaking to you, Sleepy. I hope you have a pleasant or exciting stay here. Whichever you prefer. Again, there is a genuine warmth to their words. You are still basically strangers to each other, but they mean what they're saying. Maybe I'll see you again sometime. I'd like that. Please give me a Vesper route. <laughs> Please give me a Vesper. I don't know who I don't know who we would be in this game. But I wanna be a I want to I wanna date Vesper. Give me a Vesper route. I demand it. Dear Obscura Writers, give me a Vesper route. Pretty please. So would I. There's a hint of a smile in their voice. Then, before you get a chance to reply, they nod and exit. I shouldn't be blushing that much from that. That was fun. I like that. Let's go through one of the self-care. Um, we just want to relax. Yeah, I just want to see. We can just chill here. We've got the place to ourselves after all. Sometimes we just need a break, and that's okay. Times are pretty tough in the underworld, aren't they? But look at us, handling you like champs. I'm proud of you. I think we're doing good. So for now, let's take it easy as long as we need. Just click when you're ready to continue. Ultimately, this is meant to be an exciting experience. But it's completely fine if it ever becomes too much. I never want to see you hurt because of a scene or a specific content. If any kind of content is triggering or becomes overwhelming, it's fine to click away. There's no shame in that. Before I let you go, I promise you'll take care of yourself. Do it for little old me. And now, you can stick around for as long as you like. I'll be here, okay? Alright guys, I milked Obscura for everything that it has so far. Some very exciting things are happening. Um, I'm so excited for chapter two. We patiently wait great art. But oh my god. Oh my god. Are we excited? <laughs> um, I. This is our first like. I think Obscura might be our first like full no, it was intertwined, but like Obscura might be our first like crazy game. Like our first like it's a little sussy sus he's a little he's a little bit of a sussy baka game. And I it will have a special place in my heart forever, and I'm very excited. Um I love this game. I think it this is this might be one of my favorites, along with um favor. And it's up there with favor and kid at the back for me. Actually, I think it might be my favorite game. I think I'm scared it might be my favorite. I have to process that. Anywho, thank you so much for spending time with me. I love having you here. I love seeing your face. I love that we get to go on so many adventures together and that we get to be so sleepy and so cozy. And remember that day by day, moment by moment, we are blossoming like a flower of lavender, calm, collected, and fragrant. And I will see you in the next one. See you later.